Hey guys, so Vern Beck here, and today I'm reviewing Metal Gear Rising Revengeance for the PS3. This is an action game that came out in 2013, part of the Metal Gear universe, like a side story. So I'm going to go over the same five categories I always do. Graphics, performance, gameplay slash story, replayability, then fun factor. Give each category a score from 1 to 10, and average it up, talk about the game a little bit after that. Uh, shout out to my dad for watching all my videos. Uh, but anyway, we'll start with graphics. This is right up there in quality with Metal Gear Solid 4 on the PS3. Just incredible graphics. Everything looks in just really good, especially for the time and the PS3. Uh, the enemies riding it, all the character models look good. Uh, all the enemies, the environments, everything's just stellar. The effects, um, how you can slice everything up just looks really, really good. Graphics are going to get a 10 from me. Performance, uh, surprisingly I had a few issues, uh, not a ton, but there was one boss in particular where, I'll put a screenshot if I can remember, where I got stuck underneath a leg of the boss, and you'll know what I'm talking about when you get to that boss, um, and then that same boss, it didn't prompt me to do like the two the uh, action buttons to start like the, the killing sequence, it's kind of hard to explain. But like the quick time events usually pop up on the screen and you could press like two buttons at once. Well that like never came up on this one boss. And I got him down to like 60.1 health and I just kept hitting kept, and nothing would happen. And I ended up having to go watch a video about like how to beat this boss. And I was doing everything right and then I tried these the buttons that you usually press with bosses and then it, would, it worked. But it took me like 10 or 15 tries, super frustrating. Um, and I docked at two points for that alone. There wasn't anything other than that that was just crazy annoying um, or game breaking. But like if it had saved with me underneath that leg, I would have been really aggravated. I mean, I tried everything to get out. I had gotten him down to like half health. It was annoying. But anyway, um, I'm going to give performance an 8 out of 10. Still really good. The game is playable all the way through. Um, and yeah, that's the only major issue I can... I can remember having. Sometimes when you like slice a fence and you're trying to go through, you'll kind of get hung up on it a little bit, but nothing serious. But uh, 8 out of 10. So gameplay slash story. So this is not your traditional Metal Gear Solid game. Um, Raiden's a cool character though. You play as Raiden in 2, and I loved 2. I thought 2 was really good. And you see Raiden in 4 fighting a few enemies. But it's definitely a different kind of game. It's an action game. You do combos. You learn new skills. You find new weapons. You upgrade your character. So it's it's deeper than you might think. Um, you learn new moves with these new uh, weapons. It has a lot to it, and it it's it takes a lot of skill. Some of in some of the the bosses aren't too hard, but some of them are incredibly challenging. So the gameplay loop is you know you go from section watch a cutscene, fight a few enemies, then fight a boss. There may be like five or six bosses throughout the game. But it's just like Metal Gear Solid where uh, you could talk in the menus to the characters. It's really neat. You talk to one character to save. It has a lot of the same sound effects, which is really cool. The story is really good in this game, actually. Uh, it's about half and half. The gameplay is right up there with the story. Um, however, the gameplay to me is... It, there is stealth, but the stealth in this game isn't nearly as refined as like in a Metal Gear Solid game, of course, because this is an action game, but where they, they just throw in some stealth. And stealth is super underutilized. I mean, you could throw like a digital magazine and hide in a box and stuff like that. Oh, there will be no spoilers in this game, or in this review, by the way. Um, <clears throat> but um, it's, it's very good. You know, it's not Metal Gear Solid 4 good, because that's nearly like, I, I wish I would have reviewed back in the day, but I'll have to go back and replay that game. This is gameplay slash story. I'm going to give that category an 8 out of 10. It's uh, respectable. They, I think they should have done more with the stealth. There's only a handful of parts where you even could use it, and if you do use it, um, it's just kind of, you know, it's not much to it. And uh, they do have, like, if you're above an enemy and you're in stealth, you can, you know, do an assassination, assassination, stuff like that. But overall, it's great. I really enjoyed the story and the gameplay. I thought it was fun and challenging. But there are, 
some spikes in difficulty that are just insane. Two bosses in particular, good lord. Even like the first main boss, second boss I guess you get to, is really tough. There's, but there's two standout bosses, and you will know when you get there because they will take you forever. Um, and another reason I only got an 8 out of 10 in that category is because I had to look up how to beat two of the bosses because they were so difficult and not very easy to kind of like figure out how to like dodge. Anyway, you'll see what I mean, but I'll move on. Replayability. Surprisingly, this is higher than most games. Um that I review, you know, like I always say, strategy games are going to get like a 10. That's the only like possible 10 unless it's like has some kind of endless mode. Like for a good example of a game that's not a strategy game that might get a 10 is like Gears of War. Either one or two had a horde mode and like endless mode where you can just try to like stand up to a bunch of enemies and just try to last it and survive as long as you can. Games like that might get a higher score. But this one surprisingly has a lot of stuff to it. So it has an eight hour campaign. It took me a little under eight hours. I'll show a few screenshots of my final statistics. Um, so an eight hour campaign, it has 20, I believe, VR missions, which are basically just challenges, different scenarios and different enemies they'll put you against, where you try to get like the best time and all that, uh, which is really, really neat. Um, so it, it doesn't just have the campaign. And during the campaign, you have individual sections where you try to it like rates your play it's it's kind of arcadey like you can get a s for you know s tier a b c d e you know that kind of thing so it rates rates like individual battles and there's a trophy to get all s's throughout the entire game which is insane so I'm going to give replayability a 7, but for somebody that likes this game more than I do, and I really enjoy the game, but this is not my cup of tea. This is a very challenging game. For people that love this game, this might be a 10 for replayability. Maybe not. Maybe like an, an 8 or a 9, because eventually you're going to master everything. You're going to get an S on everything, you know, even those uh, VR missions. There's only 20 of them, but there's a lot more to this game um, than meets the eye. So I'm going to give replayability a 7. But like I said, if you're obsessed with games like this and uh, kind of into fighting games, you might give that a higher, uh, that category a higher score. The last category is fun factor. So my fun, it was a roller coaster. I'd be having a lot of fun and then I'd get to a boss and just get my butt whooped for like an hour. And one boss took me two days. I mean, of course, not straight through, but... The final boss is so tough. Even if you watch videos on how to do it, it's still... It, you can watch videos on how to beat every one of these bosses and you're still going to struggle because you just have to learn these bosses. It's almost like a Souls game in that so, certain bosses have different phases and they're incredibly difficult. So, I had fun. It was really cool to see a, a Metal Gear game not in the same like super stealth um, action game. This was way more action stealth you know way more emphasis on action so it was neat to see and fun to play but it was incredibly challenging maybe just too challenging for me it would be tempting or i was tempted i don't know if you can switch the difficulty um, midway through but to switch the difficulty because it is so difficult but it is one of the hardest games i've ever beaten and i'm proud to have beat it so it overall i had a good time Fun factor, I give a 7. So just to recap, I gave graphics a 10, performance an 8, gameplay slash story an 8, replayability a 7, fun factor a 7. That averages out to an 8 or an eight out of 10, which is a really good game. Um, didn't mention the music is insanely good. It's cool action music. Gets you pumped up while you're fighting. I really like the music. Uh, I mentioned the glitch boss. Um, I love the side combos. Like I'm, I don't know if I mentioned it or not, but you can just like go into the menu and talk to the characters and learn about them and they'll talk for it forever. It's just a traditional Metal Gear game in that respect where you can just talk and talk and talk to the characters. But it's neat. I like that that's there. You don't have to do it though if you don't want to. Um, there's collectibles in the game. You can find like those VR missions have to be found throughout the game. They're little like computers. So that's kind of cool. It adds to the game a little bit. You're always looking for stuff. There's you know boxes hidden throughout the game to get power-ups and stuff like that which is cool. So yeah, I really enjoyed this game. Uh, another buddy, two of my buddies are playing this game as well. And it's it's funny uh, to be a little ahead of them and then hear about their struggles with the bosses. 
because it is so frustrating at certain points, but so rewarding when you beat them. But you gotta beat them and it's tough. This also came out on the Xbox 360 back in the day. This would be a great game for like a, a modern re-release on the PS5 so more people could experience this game because right now I think it's just locked on PS3 and the 360. Maybe Windows as well. But that's all I got for Metal Gear Rising Revengeance. Uh, so right now.